up, witches? Note the look of disgruntlement on my face. I just shot a 55 minute video on this deck. And then guess what I found out? I bet you can guess that I had my microphone still muted from the end of my live stream yesterday because because I just can't seem to remember <laughs> to check before I start talking. So here we go again, but it's to your benefit because this is a very complex deck and there's a lot of really great information and I spent a lot of time kind of picking through and searching because I didn't look at the deck. I hadn't seen it in a while and I wanted to give you a pure reaction so I didn't look at anything at a time. But now you get a more streamlined video. So before I start, go down there, please hit like, subscribe, share, hit the bell so you know when videos come up. Support me if you'd like, and I will send a warning shot right now that I am almost out of decks. I have less than, I've got four weeks worth of content left for my unboxing series. So you know what to do. Get busy. Click the Amazon wish list below. Send me a deck and you will get a reading and you'll get another unboxing if you really like this series. I really like this series and I will continue to buy decks, but I can't continue to buy two of them a week. So, uh, so check out my list. Be generous. You can also send me a donation and I appreciate that. And I send you threefold blessings for everything that you send my way. All right, let's get going. This is the William Blake Tarot <clears throat> by Ed Burin. The William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination Revised Edition. The sides just say Ed Burin, William Blake Tarot. The top says T-A-R-O-T or it would if it would freaking focus. T-A-R-O-T. There we go. Tools and Rights of Transformation. The William Blake Tarot explains the mystical vision and artistry of the renowned English painter and poet, 1757 to 1827, correlating his imagery with the traditional Tarot. In this strikingly beautiful divination deck, Blake's prophetic prophetic system becomes a powerful tool for creative inspiration, personal problem solving, and spiritual self-development. Its cards provide a vivid introduction to Blake's thought and mythology. And the contents are 22 triumphs cards, 56 creative process suits cards with symbol windows, eternity card, interpretive card for suit key phrases, and 32 page interpretive handbook including fourfold vision and Celtic cross spreads. <clears throat> All right, let's go in. This is a, a this is a stuffed <laughs> fat deck and not the deck itself. Um, because in this box also comes your standard little white book, but then we get this as well, which is two pages, three sides printed, just folded and stuck in there with it. So, and this is a lecture uh, that the author did. And I will also tell you that if you go to edburin.com, and here's how he spells his name, Ed, B-U-R-Y-N, so edburin.com, you can purchase this deck for the same amount that I purchased it for. Actually, I got a 50% off, but um, $32.00. You can still buy it for that amount and for no amount, you can get a download PDF of a, the 76 page book that goes with this deck. And we'll be talking about that after we run through the cards. I've got it up on my other screen so you'll be able to actually see this book. But you know, why wouldn't you do that? It's always amazing when people have information for free. I'm a sucker for it. Okay, let's look at the backs. Backs are just a line drawing, kind of a negative drawing of um, angels from Blake's works. And I do want to read just this short section in the beginning. The William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination is a collaged color deck illustrated by the visionary art of William Blake. 
mystical painter, poet, mythologizer, and proto-psychologist. Although Blake lived 200 years ago, his spiritual art and ideas remain totally relevant to our own time. This tarot deck is based on Blake's central thesis that human creative imagination represents the divine aspect of mankind. The Blake Tarot, radical yet classical, offers a powerful tool for stimulating creativity and spiritual growth and a way to learn more about William Blake and his spiritually revolutionary ideas. Okay. I like the proto-psychologist, you know, delving into the human mind and, and motivations and spirit and everything way back then. And he was a Gemini, by the way. I, it made me go do a little bit of research. Um, November 28th. So back then, because um, he feels Aquarian in nature, but back then Aquarius was ruled by Saturn, you know, the Lord of Karma. And I mean, that makes sense too, but it makes so much more sense that he was a Sag because that's ruled by Jupiter and just, you know, broad mindedness, far reaching philosophies and, um, and all that kind of stuff. So here is the card they talked about with the keywords, William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination Revised Edition. So the key phrases for uh, the triumphs, which are the trumps or the major arcana, the soul's journey, experiencing fall and regeneration, the cycles of eternity. Then we have the creative process suits. Painting is the embodiment of inner vision, giving form to spiritual light, path of sensation and spirit. The suit of science is challenge of self-understanding, striving to know self and world, path of intellect and learning. The music suit is the celebration of life force, feeling with heart and soul, path of love and beauty. And the poetry suit, the expression of eternal truth, to speak with prophetic inspiration, path of individuality and revelation. So, <clears throat> now take a look at the symbols for each of these suits. The artist's palette and the paintbrush on the left and you see how they've translated it into the abstract symbol and there's the symbol of science from a compass the symbol of music is a lyre and then the symbol of poetry is scroll with a pen so it's wonderful having these handy symbols but he mentions in the book that the symbol for painting corresponds to pentagrams so that just the coins you know the round shape of the coins Science is swords, therefore air. And you see the point of a sword there. Music is looks like a cup. And then poetry, um, I mean, I have a harder time relating that to wand, but I just, you know, I see the pen, the pen and the scroll, and, and I definitely see a pen as a wand. All right. This um, set was... This is the, the revised edition. This was published in 2010. Um, the original copyright is 1995. Uh, let's see here. And it's published by the Tools and Rights of Transformation. All right. Artwork. Eternity is the double zero card. So they said that this was like a bonus, was a gift, you know, card, an eternity card, but they consider that the double zero that kicks everything off. And then we have the Fool card, and you can see that the imagery definitely harkens back to um, the Waitsmith deck. Um, it does say in the booklet as well, he recommends that if you have any version of the Rider Waitsmith deck, to look at the cards side by side and study that and I think that's a great idea. For one thing, if you're already familiar with that system, it definitely helps you integrate the new images. Um, they can just sort of ride along in your visual cortex <laughs> um, and hook themselves to the other cards, but also to just see how things are the same, how things are different, lots of information there. So the magician is called Magic. And look at what all's going on here. Reaching up to the star, the angel kind of ducking down underneath the diaper there. <laughs> Sorry. That looks like a sistrum on the ground and a fire. This definitely looks like a trance journey to me. How about you? Okay. And then we have mystery. The high priestess is called mystery. Nature is the empress and 
I mean, what a wonderful image that is. We've got flowering and fruiting plants and children. Looking at the borders and we've just got some angels lounging and some musical instruments as well. Plenty of symbology to draw on. And that's probably a very familiar image to most of you. The emperor is reason. So I like that we have nature and then reason. And you see in the borders, we've got scrolls and books and the compass to measure things with. The hierophant is religion. We've got a couple of wands with fleur-de-lis and there's the hierophant with wings and it almost looks like oh he a bat that's rather interesting <clears throat> let's set him aside um here we have the lovers which is knowledge how interesting is that there's the angel on the right and the couple. Knowledge and the lovers. So knowledge is when you, you know, take something in. You take something in and it becomes part of you. That's a really, there's, there's plenty in this deck to just meditate on. No matter how familiar you are with Tarot, even more if you are familiar. And the chariot card is called experience. It's a very interesting image with a really wide border. Eight. All right, so we have justice as the number eight card, and this is assessment. I like that. Rather than judgment, something is or it isn't, this is dynamic. Assessment means I'm in the process of weighing and balancing. Wonderful. Imagination is the hermit. There he is with this lamp. And you think of imagination as kind of going internally. Uh, the wheel is the whirlwind. I like that too. That kind of gives you the idea that you can you can sort of, I mean, are you caught up or not? If it's a wheel, I think, you know, I can step off the wheel. Um, you know, the wheel of samsara. <laughs> but the whirlwind, it's like something you can definitely get caught up in. And then um, the strength card is energy. And we have a man and a horse and a lion and a poisonous snake. Actually, red touches black, you're okay, Jack. So that's not a poisonous snake. Venomous snake, I should say peacocks and eagles and chickens reversal this is the hanged man look at how it's written pretty cool death is transformation temperance is forgiveness isn't that a wonderful concept the devil is error he represents, you know, erroneous thoughts, the things that we get caught up in, the thoughts that take us over and away from the truth. It's error. Then we have tower is lightning. And the star is called stars. We see constellations flying around the sky and the astrologer there looking at them. Ah, that's pretty cool. Moon. And check this out. Look at these people hiding in the dark with daggers. Ready to jump out and have at you. So that definitely brings hidden dangers out in the meanings. Here's the sun card. Wee, everybody's flying around. Judgment is liberty. You can tell that so much artwork was done in trance state, you know. <laughs> and then the world card is union. And clearly a male. Sometimes the um, angel is androgynous. Most of the time it's female. Not in this deck. 
Now we have the Ace of Painting. So you see the, the palette and the symbol. I don't know why they give you both when they bother to make it a symbol. Oh well. And looky, ta da ta da, we got keywords. Yay! So here's the Ace of Painting, which is the Ace of Pentacles, and it's Generation. Two of Painting Balance. Think of the Two of Pentacles and the juggling going on there. Practice is the Three. Four is Means. You definitely see echoes of the Waitsmith. Five is hardship. I love these keywords. Six is assistance. Seven is patience. Waiting for things to grow. Discipline is the eighth. That's the apprenticeship practicing. And But three was practice. See, I always see the three of pentacles as mastery. And then we have the nine is fruition. And the 10, delight. That's a wonderful keyword. These are great. This one says the graphic muse, the angel of painting. So for the courts, these are called person cards. We have the angel, the child. One would think that would be cups with all the water, but this is pentacles. The child, the woman, and the man. So she's painting, he's painting, the angel just shows a palette and brushes at the ready. It says something there that I cannot read. Josh Reynolds play? I don't know. And then the man with all the colors flowing around him. All right. Ace of Science. This corresponds to swords and air. Ace of Science is intellect, jealousy, reflection. Wee, 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 wee. Ace, whoops. They got out of order. The two is reflection. We don't have any blindfolds, but we have this big closed door. <clears throat> jealousy is the three. Four is repose. Five is division. The six is passage. So that's usually the boat. Seven, lamentation. So rather than the thief card, it's lamentation. The eight is restriction. The closed eyes there and the shackles. Nine is despair. Ten is defeat. <clears throat> so what was the five again? Division. Okay. So the five of swords that usually talks about, you know, conquest or defeat is um, division. That's the beginning of defeat, I guess. And then we have defeat. And there's the angel. Quis in demonstrat. The child. Got somebody teaching him stuff. The woman looking at the stars, plotting the stars with the telescope, and the man. Okay, now we have music, and I'm going to take my sweater off because. My sensitive ass elbows can feel the knit and it hurts. All right. Ace of music, passion. And these have a verse on them. The desire of man being infinite, the possession is infinite and himself infinite. The two of music without contraries is no prog progression. Attraction and repulsion, reason and energy, love and hate, are necessary to human existence. So we have to have opposites in order to progress. The three of music is exuberance. Exuberance is beauty. 
The four is musing, and I wrote my happy songs every child may joy to hear. Melancholy, the five of music. Whatever is born of mortal birth must be con whatever is born of mortal birth must be consumed with the earth to rise from generation free, then what have I to do with thee? And it says William Blake with his death date on there. Uh, pleasure is the six of music, and music is cups. Remember, we cannot experience pleasure but by means of others. So think about memories, the happy memory card. The seven is fancies. To me, this world is all one continued vision of fancy or imagination. So that's the seven of cups for sure. Fancy and imagination. Discontent is the eight, clouded with discontent and brooding in their minds terrible things. That's the walking away from it all card. Happiness, the wish card. Nine of music, he who binds to himself a joy does the winged life destroy. But he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. Mm -hmm. Sublimity is the ten of music. Peace and plenty and domestic happiness is the source of sublime art. We have the angel of music. Like as an angel glittering in the sky in times of innocence and holy joy, the joyful shepherd stops his grateful song to hear the music of an angel's tongue. That's kind of a Christmassy thing, isn't it? There's the star in the sky, looks kind of Bethlehemish behind, I don't know. Piping down the valley's wild, piping songs of pe pleasant glee. This is the child of music. What's he got like a wolf skin on? Interesting. Loud and more loud, the living music floats upon the air. There's the woman of music. Music as it exists in old tunes or melodies is inspiration and cannot be surpassed in its perfect, it is perfect and eternal. There's the man of music. So that to me, you know, the whole argument about folk music and traditional musics and whether they should ever be changed, um, there are certain people that feel that they should only be played the way they were initially written, which does anybody really know that? But they should be played, you know, traditional music, traditional structure, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I agree that that must be kept. There must be, if you're going to be part of that tradition and expand on it, you must also be a keeper of the tradition itself and then expand on it. So, you know, I think that's a, that's a both and situation. But there's the man of music. And then we have poetry. And every time I say poetry, my brain says pootery. So, you know, that's the, that's the little kid in my head. Inspiration, ace of poetry. I come in self-annihilation to cast off the rotten rags of memory by inspiration. To cast aside from poetry all that is not inspiration. So cast off the rotten rags of memory by inspiration and to cast aside from poetry all that is not inspiration. Wow. Self-annihilation. So poetry is wands. And there's the ace. Look at the angel coming down. Like she's swan diving into his mouth. <laughs> So his words, the poetry may come out. All right, individuality. Every man's wisdom is peculiar to his own individuality. There's creativity, uh, inspiration, individuality. All right, that's what I said. Creativity, I must create a system or be enslaved by another man's. I will not reason and compare. My business is to create. Come on, pop. Yep. Harmony is the four. Love and harmony combine and around our souls entwine while thy branches mix with mine and our roots together join. So it doesn't show them building like the bower or the, you know, the, the canopy for marriage, but it certainly has the vibe of marriage. Five of wands, five of poetry is strife. Thou art a man. God is no more. Thy own humanity learn to adore, for that is my spirit of life. Awake, arise to spiritual strife. And that's, what was it, the five? 
Five of Wands. Wow. Cooperation is the six. This would be the victory card. Gods are visions of the eternal attributes or divine names. They ought to be the servants and not the masters of man. Cooperating in the bliss of man, obeying his will, servants to the infinite and eternal of the human form. Yeah, baby. Boldness, and look at how it's written. So this is the seven of wands, the seven of pootery. The times require that, <laughs> sorry, the times require that everyone should speak out boldly. Every man should do his duty in arts as well as in arms or in the Senate. That looks like my master sculptor. Hmm. Hi there. Swiftness is the eight. Time is the mercy of eternity. Without time's swiftness, which is the swiftest of all things, all were eternal torment. Wow. So it's saying, thank God time goes flying by. Or we'd just be suffering. The nine is powers. You were placed here by the Universal Brotherhood and Mercy with Pow and Mercy, the Universal Brotherhood and Mercy, with powers fitted to circumscribe this dark satanic death. Yikes. And then the ten is prophecy. In futurity I prophetic see that the earth from sleep, grave the sentence deep, shall arise and seek for her maker meek, and the desert wild become a garden mild. Wow. Okay, then we have the angel. It says, angels stand round my spirit. <laughs> I know I'll get there eventually. Then we have child of poetry. I found them blind. I taught them to see. And it says William there. The woman to go forth to the great harvest and vintage of the nations. That's the queen and the king, the man of poetry. That says Milton, to justify the ways of God to men. All right. By the way, the miners, you know, it said a, a, a convenient little, what did it say? Um, with symbol windows. Okay, so these little these little spaces are considered symbol windows, and they just have little you know doodles in them, and that is given so that you can add your own things to these cards, either writing them in or pasting them in or whatever. And he even recommends that you use a wax pencil so that you can wipe it off. So, very interesting there. Let's look up this Hierophant religion. Need or desire for personal guidance. Hypocritical influences may be present. Spiritual materialism. Question authority and be suspicious of leaders and gurus. Conventional morality may be a dominant factor. Corruption in high places. Fighting or giving in to city hall. Feeling oppressed by the rules. So, it doesn't talk about why he's a bat. But that definitely says don't trust him. So that's pretty clear. All right, let's uh, get the charcoal lit. Whilst I shuffle. <clears throat> I'm sorry for all the throat clearing. Here we go. It's a good shuffler, because even though it's a big deck, it's got the best kind of card stock. Just the best kind. It also says in the book, and I will read you that part, and I might do a little bit of a comparison. Oh, Mitchell. I don't know if you can hear Mitchell screaming. <laughs> he has this really high squeaky meow. What's up, Mitchell? Mitchell? Come on, 
Come on now. No, he's just screaming. Oops, they don't want to be shuffled anymore. All right, now I'm going to cut them and then I'm going to do the spread and pick, but not before we once again today <laughs> consecrate this deck. Did you light? Yeah, go ahead and touch hot things, Luna. That's okay. That's okay. So, I would like to bless to purify and activate this deck with air and fire and the fire of Azrael. And I would like to bless and make whole this deck with earth and water. And I invite my allies and ancestors, guides and guardians to come and be present to me here to clarify my mind and awaken the images that are in there and help me connect to the collective consciousness so that my message can be clear and useful to my viewers. So mode it be. Let's give them another couple of cuts. And I'm going to do, in, in the other video, I did this four card thing, actually a five card, but we're going to do a different five card. These spread apart so easily. I mean, you see me with decks where I have to like batter them to get them to spread apart. You know, I'm going to do that again because it was so much fun. Because <laughs> I spread them out too far in the beginning. Let's just do it this way. Like that. Look at that. That's how decks are supposed to do. All right. So at the, in the beginning here, under choice of spreads, it said the following spreads do not use reversed upside down card interpretations because a full range of meanings are offered by the symbols of each card in its upright position. Reversed cards tend to foster pessimism and anxiety, which limit creative visioning and receptivity to spiritual truth. I mean, as someone who's not used uh, reverses until now for a long, long, long number of years, I understand. All right, now this little book only gives the two-card creativity spread, the fourfold vision spread, and the Celtic cross spread. So let's go to let me see something here. All right. And then we have the major arcana and just the minors, and there's nothing else. So let's go here. I'll take myself out. This is the 76-page book that you can get for free as a download on edburin.com. And the William Blake Tarot of the Creative Imagination, based on the works of William Blake. Very nice. We have a verse here. All of these verses everywhere. I rest not from my great task to open the eternal worlds, to open to the immortal eyes of man inwards into the worlds of thought. So that's lovely. And then we have that same, you know, descriptor of the suits card. And wait a minute. Copyright published by Tarot. Yeah, we knew that. And here's the table of contents. So we've got about this deck, the creative imagination, about William Blake, Blake and the Tarot. All right, so we go. Let me see here. We've got more quotations from Manly P. Hall and Plotinus. The soul's presence will be secured all the more readily when an appropriate receptacle is elaborated, something reproducing it or representing it and serving like a mirror to catch an image of it. That's a, what we're looking at right now. The tarot cards are, and that's Plotinus, the tarot cards are a picture book of essential truths setting forth figuratively those fundamental verities about which all enlightened faiths are in common agreement. And that is Manly P. Hall. Okay, the creative imagination about William Blake, Blake and the Tarot. Um, he was the writer of Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright in the Forests of the Night. Chapter 2, Blake's System. So they go in depth uh, about the suits. 
I must create a system or be enslaved by another man's. I will not reason and compare my businesses to create. That was on one of the poetry or, or other ones there, music. Those who have been told that my works are but an unscientific and irregular eccentricity, a madman's scrawls, I demand of them to do the just, do me the justice, good God, do me the justice to examine before they decide. Right on. Okay, correspondence of the Blake Triumphs, the back design, illustration on the verso of each card is from the title page of the illustrations of the Book of Job. He depicts seven angels that he calls the eyes of God, referred to in the Bible as the seven eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro through the whole earth. Okay, so you get in-depth history. The four Zoas of Albion, holy moly, an ancient term for England. Ah, uh, okay, though, about the white goddess, we got all kinds of stuff going on here. All right, and then we've got this... Um, whole correspondence table here where we have like the fool it's innocence tharmus with dog materialization of the soul tharmus fallen by so all this in-depth stuff that you can really delve into the mind and the system of william blake and then we have the triumphs so there's the cycle of matter the cycle of awakening and the cycle of spirit fascinating um looking at the fact that we've got here the fall and matter we have the fall and worldliness awakening we have gener regeneration and transformation and then which ends with temperance and then we have wait a minute yeah transformation and then we have the dark night of the soul which is the devil in the tower and then we have revelation so we've got categories and subcategories and sub subcategories and just amazing stuff here all right then we start with the cards so you get to go through all of them and there was something that i wrote down page 56 for why did i do that um it talks about the glyphs for the cards okay and the correspondences and here's where it says all owners of another deck especially the Waite Smith deck are strongly urged to compare every card in their deck with every card in the Blake deck by placing the correspondence cards side by side this exercise will greatly accelerate the process of understanding the cards and should prove highly entertaining as well all right and then when you get to the back um, there are and it talks about the symbol windows and how to use those but whoops <laughs> good grief um what i'm looking for is the readings at the back okay here we go at the back of this book there are more readings there's the one card a three card and then there are blakeian spreads the four fourfold vision spread the one i'm looking for here is the creative process spread there we go here it is so we have C and P. All right, imagining, feeling. So we're just going to pick six cards. And let's go back to here. All right. So this is the creative process spread. All right, they're telling me off the top one. Two. And that one is feeling. So the first one is imagining. The next one is feeling. Oh, no, wait. So the first two that I picked, position one is the project. Position two is the creator. All right, now we have, this one is imagining, dead ahead. That's three, four to the left.
So the first one is creative project, knowledge. All right, I'm down with that. So I'm going to go to the little white book for um, so I don't have to go off of here. I am so thrilled that there's this full book that is just a free download. So much information in it. All right, an important, possibly moral choice to be made. Remember that knowledge is the lover's card. Be discriminating with advice from others, deep insight into a relationship or one's own involvement in a relationship, a need to integrate all levels of consciousness within oneself, ding, 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 an opportunity for intimacy and or open communications. So for the group here, a need to integrate all levels of consciousness within oneself. So let's figure out how we do that. Now, this is who we are in the creative process as creator. We have the six of science, which is passage. Opening the way or clearing obstacles. All right. So the project to integrate on all levels, the first thing what we need to do, or us as the creator, um, our work now is clearing away obstacles. Interesting that I'm shooting this on a Mercury retrograde. Movement of information, a rite of passage, a stressful journey, seeking a sense of purpose. All right, receiving guidance from higher source. So here are all the things that we need to do as the creator of this in this project, within this project of integrating ourselves. We need to clear our blockages. We need to move information and bring new information in. We need to have a purpose. We need to connect with spirit. We need to explore new terrain. It says opportunities are being overlooked. Const con contrary states need to be bridged in that, yes, passage. And in the creative process, your imagination needs to be uncovered or unleashed by resolving contradictory elements and seeking spiritual guidance. All right. So that's who we are. Now, let's look at the card describing imagination. I'm going to be covering some things here because they're big. Harmony. So this says truth, north, earth, hearing, the nadir, Breadth, humanity, poetry. All right, so the, the truth. Four of Pootery. Love and harmony combined, combine and around our souls entwine while thy branches mix with mine and our roots together join. So imagination and truth, things are coming together beautifully, giving thanks for an achievement or personal success. All right, imagining. So what we need to be imagining here is harmony. As simple as that. Imagine things coming together beautifully. Imagine us in, in right relationship with ourselves. We're talking about integrating on all levels, right? So we need to be in right relationship with ourselves and in right relationship with spirit. Working with a partner. The various elements and personalities involved in your project are interacting harmoniously, generating an appropriate sense of gratitude for what has been accomplished so far. So that is, it's, there's a, you know, the name of the card, the verse for those two suits that have verses, and then um, the description, and then at the end there's a, a one that says, in the creative process, colon, and that's that, that last meaning that I read that doesn't seem to apply to this particular kind of reading. So I'll skip that one in the future. And then the next one is feeling. Feeling or vibration. Truth. So also imagination, um, you know, looking at the truth of it outside of our own judgments, I think is what that is saying, that everything is in balance and harmony according to the laws of the universe. So over here we have feeling or vibration and we get experience, which is the chariot card. Wanting to be in control of your instincts, emotions, or elemental forces. Ooh. 
taking the reins in the situation, goal-oriented or materialistic drive to succeed, journeys or involvement with motion and mobility, the need to prove something or impose your will on others, meeting challenges head-on, possibly bizarre circumstances. That's very interesting. Okay, so in the realm of feeling or vibration here, it's talking about instincts, emotions, and, and wanting to be in control of those. So to me, it's saying that we need to let loose of control and feel the vibrations and see where they take us is the chariot there. Vibrations east, fire. Ooh, we have fire in the east? Yikes, never mind. Um, emanation music, the center and heart vibration. Well, just this part of, you know, wanting to control your instincts and emotions and if you look at the chariot it's somebody you know harnessing that natural energy in order to take them someplace so with that we harness our emotional energy we don't control it we harness it and then let it do what it does and we follow along we got all the majors here holy moly transformation this is the category of thinking structure Eliminating something old to make room for something new. Clear out your brain. What are the old thoughts? What are the dogmas you're carrying around with you? What's the stuff that you were told when you were a kid that you haven't even thought to question? You know, there are times where um, if you're experiencing a lot of doubt, you know, use that energy. Doubt everything. <laughs> doubt, doubt everything. Question everything. Um, and that takes you on to learning. So it's talking about removing blockages, eliminating something. Let's talk about blockages, eliminating something old to make room for something new. A major change or metamorphosis is at hand in thought. And Mercury Retro, when I'm shooting this, if you're watching this around when I'm shooting it or uploading it, um, is a great time for this. Weeding out, just weeding out the wrong ideas. Um, this is the death card, but the devil card is that um, in Tara practice, they call it um, the demon of wrong ideas. Okay, or is it the thief of wrong ideas? I think it's the thief. Anyway, eliminating something, burning your bridges behind you, renewal, preparing for the future, letting go is advised even if difficult acceptance of what is inevitable, cutting your losses, stripping away the excess or superfluous. So time to trim down, lean and mean, um, to go to the essence of what your belief system is rather than going to the window dressing of, you know, each new belief system. Um, <clears throat> when we're trying to integrate spiritually and we have a system that doesn't quite fit us and then we go to the next system, we can get caught up sometimes in the window dressing and we don't stick with the system long enough to get to the essence of it, to find the essence. We might see the outer cover of it and make a snap judgment about what that we think that means without finding out what it really means within the context of that belief system. So anyway, this just talks about weeding out all the old faulty thoughts. And then we have manifesting is the last one and we have the man of painting, which is man of pentacles. <clears throat> getting on top of practical aspects of the situation, taking a pragmatic outlook of what needs to be done. But what a great thing, you know, for the, for the, um, oh, this is for water, but it's manifest. Okay. My, um, he's blown my mind here because thinking is East and air, but he's got the air in the South and feeling, he's got feeling with fire, manifesting with water, and imagining with earth. See, to me, imagining is air, manifesting, no, thinking is air, imagining would be fire, feeling would be water, and manifesting would be earth. Okay, this is like one of those systems where you have to, if you really want to be within his system, you're going to have some new stuff to learn. So know that. But Obviously, you can certainly use it without taking all that on board. All right. Using calm and caution in a highly charged situation. Taking a conservative yet colorful and personal approach. 
total concentration on the task at hand, bathing in the light of life, not holding back from direct experience. All right, so through all this, to integrate on all levels, um, at the end we need to be practical about it. Take a pragmatic outlook and to me, do practical things like meditating. It says, you know, take a pragmatic outlook at what needs to be done using calm and caution. You need to to um, decide what structure you're going to set up in order to accomplish this integration. Total concentration at the task at hand. That means you need to practice it and concentrate. Um, and, you know, integration to me means that my thoughts, my speech, my actions are all in alignment with what I say I believe in. Um, and so think in those terms, you know, integrating on all levels, disintegrating on all levels, or, you know, the opposite would be um, people that say they believe in Jesus and um, then they are warlike and don't want to feed children that are starving. Um, people that say they are, you know, they believe in the teachings of the Buddha and nonviolence and then they're a domestic abuser. So, you know, things, things like that, that's, that's dismemberment. And, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Compartmentalization. So, we're going for the knowledge here. We've got to get the blocks out of our way. We need to imagine um, the end as harmony. The truth of it is that the universe is harmonious with itself. So we have that realization. And then we move uh, beyond our wanting to control our emotions. We harness that energy, that vibration um, of go, go, go to take us places. And then we go to... Um, the thinking we get to into our mental energy and weed out the thoughts and things that no longer serve us. And then we get very practical about it and bring this into a daily structure and practice. That's how I'm reading it. So what do you think of this deck? And, and this, I'm going to show you this as well. This, these pages are a lecture, um, that the author did in 1997. And this is actually in the book. So I'm going to get rid of that page because it's going to bust my box apart. But this is not in the book. This is a separate 1996 by Ed Byrne, All Rights Reserved. So this might be that the new revised version has this stuff in it that the little book doesn't have. So, I mean, look at what we've got here. We've got innocence and union and all the, the oh, wow, this whole freaking wheel. So this man has done some serious, serious work, um, channeling William Blake, may I say, and studying him. So, you know, if you're, if you're really into Blake, Fabulous. Go for it. This is a great deck to have. It certainly reads well. And I would say whatever time you spend with it, studying and reading, I'm not getting any, um, what's the word, any pomposity with this. Sometimes you get systems where they go really deep. And from the author, you know, there's that attitude of I know something and you don't, you know, I'm, I'm up here giving you my knowledge. This feels humble. It feels like the dude knows what the hell he's talking about. And, um, it's not difficult to understand what he's saying. Um, it's not dense. There's a lot of it. It's copious, but it's not dense, easily readable, e easily digestible. Um, and yeah, he really goes into, you know, ways to work with this deck to really internalize the system. So this video was just as long as the other one. I thought you were getting a streamlined version. Ha ha. Well, you got much less hemming and hawing. So you got more talking than was in the other one. And my mic has been unmuted this whole time. Yay, Luna. Jesus criminy. All right, you guys. <laughs> So do all the things I told you to do in the beginning, like subscribe, share, bell, donate if you can, buy me a frickin' deck, 
join my heckin patreon and get exclusive content show up here on mondays and fridays for a tarot and oracle unboxings as long as while well, they last and show up here on wednesday evenings and saturday afternoons for live streams there's live stream readings and live stream prayer circle um i am going to be adding to my patreon virtual coven so if you're into that hop on there at any level at the initiate priestess or goddess level read about the levels goddess level gets you 20 minutes face to face time with me to ask any questions you want or get a reading or whatever you want to do as long as you're on that um, every month that you're subscribed at that level you get readings with me all right you guys have a great day keep yourselves warm wear your masks stay safe all of that follow the rules let's get through this we're far from done let's get through it I know we can all right till next time this is the Zen witch blessed be Thank you.